Hello and welcome to this RSNA case of the week, which is esophageal gastrointestinal stromal tumor. My name is Daniela Galan and I am a body imaging fellow at the University of Miami. This patient is a 45-year-old female with history of total gastrectomy and gastrojejunostomy for a gastric mass, who presented with new dysphagia for solids and discomfort while eating with early satiety. Shown here are a right anteroposterior and anterior oblique double contrast barium esophagram images, demonstrating a smooth mass in the right wall of the distal esophagus, denoted by the yellow arrows, forming obtuse angles with the adjacent wall without obstruction of the lumen and the patent esophagojejunostomy. Here is a CT image of the chest with oral and intravenous contrast obtained during an arterial phase, confirming the presence of a well-defined enhancing mass with smooth margins and an intraluminal component protruding into the right posterior lateral wall of the esophagus. Images A and B correspond to a FDG PET and axial CT image of the chest, showing a homogeneously FDG avid area corresponding to the isodense mass in the distal esophagus, denoting its hypermetabolic nature. This endoscopic image of the distal esophagus shows an intramural mass with overlying intact mucosa. Final diagnosis is esophageal gastrointestinal stromal tumor. Gastrointestinal stromal tumors are neoplasms which occur throughout the gastrointestinal tract with varying malignancy potential, ranging from indolent tumors to rapidly progressive malignancies. We establish our diagnosis based on the history of total gastrectomy and esophagojejunostomy for a gastric gist. Barium esophagram and CT images show a smooth, well-defined non-obstructive mass protruding into the lumen of the distal esophagus. Upper endoscopy confirmed the presence of a mass with overlying intact mucosa, which was FDG avid on PET scan. Pathology report from the esophageal mass biopsy revealed gastrointestinal stromal tumor, morphologically similar to prior gastric mass, indicative of disease recurrence. The differential diagnosis includes esophageal squamous cell carcinoma, esophageal adenocarcinoma, and esophageal leiomyoma. Squamous cell carcinoma presents on varying esophagram as an irregular esophageal narrowing and ulceration. On CT frequently appears as asymmetric esophageal thickening, and the majority of the tumors affect the middle esophagus. Esophageal adenocarcinoma on bearing esophagram usually appears as irregular structures or a large, deep, solitary ulcer in the distal esophagus. On CT, appears as an irregular, eccentric, or circumferential wall thickening and may show perisophageal fat stranding, adjacent adenopathy, and invasion to adjacent organs or distant metastasis. Finally, esophageal leiomyoma present as a smooth surface submucosal mass that forms slightly obtuse angles with the adjacent esophageal wall. It is difficult to distinguish from GIST prior to biopsy due to the overlapping imaging features. Nonetheless, esophageal GISTs tend to be more distal, avidly enhancing on CT and markedly FDG avid on PET. To summarize, gastrointestinal stromal tumors are neoplasms which occur throughout the gastrointestinal tract. Approximately 1-3% to of GISTs are found in the esophagus and are most commonly observed in the lower esophagus, followed by the middle esophagus. On barium esophagram may demonstrate esophageal deviation and a smoothly contoured mass arising from the wall. Although appreciably rare, esophageal GISTs should be considered in the setting of esophageal neoplasm in patients with anemia and in patients with history of prior gastric mass. It is difficult to distinguish from other submucosal tumors prior to biopsy due to overlapping imaging features. Nonetheless, esophageal gists tend to be more distal, avidly enhancing on CT and markedly FDG avid on PET. Most gists are associated with an activating mutation in KIT or platelet derived growth factor. For that reason, molecular testing with mutation analysis is essential for selection of appropriate therapy. Prognosis and survival rates are widely variable and depend mostly on mitotic activity of the tumor, completeness of surgical resection, and on the presence of distant disease, with a five-year survival rate ranging from approximately 55 to 93%. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and thank you for watching.